everybody, welcome to an autumn 2013 SWAT review. My name is Kate, otherwise known as Narutaki. And I'm Alan, otherwise known as Hisui. And we are from ReverseThieves.com. You can go there to get other SWAT reviews for the new season, our case closed reviews for the past season, as well as our monthly Speakeasy podcast. And this time we are looking at the first episode of the new show, Kill Lock Kill, from Studio Trigger. And you can find episodes legally streaming on Hulu, Crunchyroll, the Suke, and the Aniplex channel. They are like throwing everything they can at out for the show. They really want people to see it, which is much appreciated because I'm sure there's like different territories for all of those things. It is about a crazy place where there's a crazy academy that sort of rules this town and they rule it with an iron fist and crazy uniforms and crazy powers and a transfer student appears one day and she is looking for the person who killed her father and left behind a very special sword. It really looks kind of like Gurren Lagann because Studio Trigger has made up a lot of ex-Gynax employees and it definitely has a blazing transfer student feel with a little bit of Gonagai thrown in. I just loved the energy of this episode. It just starts off really well. I think it introduces you to the world that you're about to be entered in very nicely because you have this kind of very normal, boring classroom setting. You know, students are falling asleep. Other than them talking about the rise of Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. That happened, Al. <laughs> So, <laughs> the and you know, kids falling asleep, not paying attention, whatever. And then, through the door, this giant foot and this huge man appears. And he is looking for somebody. And then there's this crazy fight. And I loved the exaggeration, the expressions. You have huge kanji characters showing up on the screen saying people's names or saying what they're hitting people with. I mean, it's really combining kind of a lot of different things that you've seen in shonen fighting series. It had like a Fist of the North Star sort of feel for me, as well as the other things you mentioned, Al. I think the scene that sums it up is that guy from the disciplinary committee, the huge guy, he like calls out this one guy who stole one of the magical uniforms and the guy takes off, you know, throws down a smoke bomb right, and starts running down the stairs and the guy just jumps out the window and you just see him... <laughs> Falling from the, like, third story that he jumped out, just, like, giving the guy the eye with the smile. As, Outside the window. <laughs> as this guy's running like mad down the stairs. And then when the disciplinary guy just punches that guy, he just flies, like, a thousand feet into this huge wall that surrounds the school. I love that there's, like, a battle arena outside of the school. Like, they don't have a courtyard like normal schools. It just seems like it is battle all the time. And then as we kind of learn about the town, it's also a really rough and tumble town. And it all hinges on the school and its student council. How classic is that? And her family, she's uh, there's the student council president that our, uh, our main girl, our transfer student, Matoy, she is convinced that she knows something about her father's death. And she, of course, rules everything. So that's who eventually, you know, she's going to have to take on the underlings, which she does in the first episode. And she's going to have to work her way up to the top to really find out and to battle through everybody. But yeah, I loved the energy. The main girl, she, of course, um, she gets mugged in uh, the first time in town and she beats up the kids and they just quickly let her go. But uh, the head of the little hooligans that try to mug her her sister comes out and beats up her little brother for trying to mug people. And she kind of becomes the kind of friend of the main character. And that kind of relationship reminded me of uh, the main girl in Cutie Honey and her kind of sidekick best friend. That they had a lot of the kind of same dynamic. Although I don't think the girl in Cutie Honey was anywhere near as cold <laughs> as my oi. <laughs> And then I like the magical uniforms. So everybody, we kind of learn about this very quickly. There is a little bit of expositioniness, you know, to the first episode, but that's fine. I think that they kind of 
they talk really fast. So I was like, oh, okay, that was over. That was quick. Um, but the uniforms, not only do they act sort of as armor, but there's different classes of uniforms and different uniforms power you up more. So there's like three star uniforms are a big deal. The Goku uniforms. And so lowly normal students don't have those. But the student council battlers, they all have different ones that uh, give them different powers. And then the Our low level th- grunt guys seem to be the what do you call it? The guys with the one star and they're just there to basically, you know, be the foot soldiers. And most of the people she'll probably fight other than the big four generals seem to be two star guys. And so she ends up in the first episode finding kind of by happenstance, a magical uniform of her own. Um, that scene was a little... I felt a little uncomfortable with that scene. And then once she kind of reveals her awesome Tazic uniform, I was a little like, eh, there could be more of a uniform there. Like, you know, not half of a uniform. But I have a feeling that the show, she's actually going to be collecting like threads from the uniform. And my whole theory is that at the end, she'll get all the threads from all the dudes that she destroys their uniforms and she'll have like awesome battle armor. But until then, boy, that's some outfit. (laughs) Or lack thereof. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hmm, interesting choice there, guys. And they already seem to be setting up an aim for the Ace parody in the next episode. It it feels like it's got a lot of references, but at the same time, it has sort of that signature, what I feel like is becoming Studio Trigger's signature energy, kind of their look. It's it. I don't feel like it's derivative. They're just kind of showing where they're coming from, and I, and I like that. And I also don't think it's so the way that they're using references. They are making them funny on their own. It is not about knowing the reference. So I think that that's important too. I think we have a fun one on our hands with this wild ride that it's going to be. Because, man, this whole episode is like full throttle the whole time. I'm not sure, like, is it going to stay that way? I feel like it's going to. There's not going to be any downtime. But somehow they made that work. But I feel like the next episode preview just seemed to be like, Time to fight the tennis girls, so I don't think that they're going to be, like, spending three episodes, you know, discussing... Exploring the, like... Student politics. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, That's okay, though. It it sold me on what it was doing. I just, uh, I hope we can keep it up. All right. See you guys next time. Kill, 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 kill,